I'm James Simpson, and I've been working at Rock Solid Refuge for four years. My official title is a youth care worker. I'm a lead, and I'm with the guys uh, one week on, one week off. And I do various things such as uh, teaching, you know, the Bible. I do group devotions. I help them with personal devotions. And not only that, I do, I do work projects. So why am I here? Well, I'm here because of my story. I grew up in an alcoholic home, which was very dysfunctional. It's no big deal for my mom and dad to scream at one another. And not only that, um, there wasn't what I would call a lot of love in the house. One night when I was 10, my mom and dad had a huge, massive fight. And my dad grabbed my mother by the hair, dragged her across the road, threw her into the house. And my mom said, that's it, Jim, I've had enough. And so she proceeded to grab the whiskey bottle, grab the Valium, and down both of them. Simply put, my mother committed suicide in front of my eyes. The next day, my mom was gone. I was angry, I was bitter, I was upset. My dad decided to drown himself in the bottle for the next four years of his life. I was bitter, I was angry, my life, to put it mildly, spiraled completely, totally out of control. I was up for anything. My dad finally died and then eventually I came to Canada. When I came to Canada, I had a new start. In that start, I started attending church even though I didn't understand who God was or, or what he wanted to do in my life. I met this guy by the name of John and John poured into me for absolutely no reason other than the fact of the love of Christ. And when I think about that, how amazing he spoke to me and, and how he actually wanted to hang out with me, a person who was completely, in my eyes, was wretched. I just couldn't care less about life. I couldn't care about anyone, yet he cared about me. You know, he showed me, he showed me what discipleship was. He showed me what mentorship was just for the sake of the fact that he recognized that law, God loved me and he would love me in return. So one of the main reasons why I'm here at Rock Solid is not because I, not because I have to be, not simply because about money or fame or fortune. What it's about is pouring into young men's life as that John did for me, which I am forever grateful. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how tough it gets, I'm always reminded of John's example in my life and I want to be that for others. I can never repay John for what he has done, but he said to me one time, when I was bitter and angry and mad at him, he put me up against the wall and he says, James, God loves you. I'm gonna tell you something, that I see potential in you, God sees potential in you. The only one who doesn't see potential in you is you, but the day you realize that God is going to use that in your life. And I wanna see that so much in the guys' life that I, that I serve, that I have a privilege and honor in sharing with. There is one story you know, in particular. A former student had come into the program and he was um, incredibly lost, hooked on drugs, and was also here for armed robbery. And, and one night he decided that that was it, it was enough. And so he started to, he started to walk. And as he began to walk, I, I went after him because it's part of what, it's because it's part of what I do. And so as I'm walking with him, he decided to cut across the field and he kept on looking back. He kept on asking me, he says, you can leave any time, any time that you want. And I said, well, I'm not leaving you. I can't. And, you know, he started to swear and he started to throw rocks and, and I kept my distance. And, and my, my staff member was with me, but he was in the van. And so we came, we came across this patch of ice and it, it was freezing. It was like minus 20 out. And I didn't know if I should cross it, but he, he started to cross. And so I had a choice. And, and, and so what was I going to do? You know, I could stop and, and walk around, but I did not know where he was. So, so I crossed the ice, he started to run and I started to run with him. And, and eventually he, he got away from me. And so I started to pray and I started to ask God, like, like where is he? The weather's getting colder, I couldn't find him. So, so we found our staff court. And when, when we found them, we started to look for him. We started to go after him be, because we realized that every single student that we have here is very, very important. And when we finally found him, he, he came up to us and, and he hugged us. And this is one point which always sticks out in my mind, is that he, he came up to me and he grabbed a hold of me and tears were coming down his eyes. And he says, James, I knew you would never leave me. He says, I knew that even though I ran, that you would follow me. And this was like five hours. 
You know, I'm not telling you this story to be perfect. I'm not telling you this story like, look at James. I'm telling you this story. That there's hundreds of like this each and every day in some way, shape, or form. And the students that we come here, we, we desperately care because there's a future and there's a hope for their life. So today, I have been married for almost 25 years to a gal by the name of Julie, who's amazing. I also have three great daughters, Rachel, Kara, and Petra. And that proves that there is a future and that there is a hope. And so when I work with the guys, I try and teach them that each and every day, that even though, even though their life is difficult now, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, I really want to pass on that, that in the midst of everything which happens in our lives, and especially to the students, that there is a future and there's a hope, and it is primarily through the gospel of Jesus Christ.